Last weekend, Margaret and I traveled the short journey from here to Jekyll Island, where we both took part in the marathon that was running there on Sunday morning. Now, people have been asking me all week how it went, and my response has been the same every time. I was there at the start line, I was there at the finish line, and I took every step in between. Margaret did too. Only she took those steps a whole lot faster than I did. I mean, seriously, she absolutely stormed it for 26.2 miles and has every reason to be very, very proud of herself. But she didn't get there without some struggle along the way. Throughout our training since August, there have been some really hard moments for her, including on our last training run, the week before Christmas, when a knee injury flared up for her. She was legitimately concerned that she was not even going to make it to the start line of the race on Jekyll Island. Now, the days running up to and the night before a race is always an interesting time with Margaret. She has a tendency to get a little bit anxious about the whole thing. And when I say a little bit anxious, I actually mean a lot anxious. She's worried that she has remembered to pack everything that she needs. She is concerned as to whether or not she's going to be able to get the job done. A worry that was even more prevalent this time, given her knee injury. Now, in those times of worry, I am always quick to remind Margaret that she had done all the training, that she had put in the miles, and that she had packed every single thing that she could possibly have needed that day, and that I was confident that she was going to get the job done. You've done the work, you've put in the miles, you've got all that you need. I know you're going to cross that line. Now, if you listen carefully, that sounds a little bit familiar and similar to what we just read from Paul's letter to the Philippians, doesn't it? He tells the church there that when he remembers them, he prays for them with great joy because of their sharing in the good news of Jesus Christ from the first day until now. Then he tells him that he is confident that the God who started a work within them will bring that work to completion. You've done the work, church. You've put in the miles. You've got all that you need. I know you'll cross that line. As we get going in this new year, we are moving through this series of sermons called Ready, set, go. It's our hope that it will help us start this year right and run our race well in 2023. Now, last week, Pastor Carrie started the series off and she did it just right by focusing our attention on Jesus Christ, in whom all things are held together. She invited us to have willing hearts and an open posture to what Christ is calling us to. So today I want to build upon Pastor Carey's sermon in hopes that it will help us to get set, to join in on what Christ is calling memorial to in this coming year. And I want to do that using a very similar structure to the one that Paul employed in his letter to the Philippian church. By the time we are done today, I want you, our church, to be confident in the healthy state That we are in, and to know that you've done all of the work that you put in the miles. I also want you to be reminded, church, that in Christ we have everything that we need to keep moving forward in the mission and ministry that Christ is calling us to. He that began a good work in us will bring it through to completion. So, what is the state of our church? 
Now that is a great question. And in the next couple of minutes, I am going to dump a lot of information that is going to show you that even after the difficulties and the struggles of 2020, 2021, and 2022, Memorial is a healthy and strong church family, well set to run the race that is set before us. Now, I've broken all of this information down into four main sections today, namely missions, membership, money, and miscellaneous, that which is left over. So let's start with the most important one. Of course, that is missions. In 2022, our church family has engaged in so much mission work, both directly and in partnership with organizations, both local and abroad. We have collected supplies for and packed 120 flood buckets. We raised $15,000 to aid relief work being done by the United Methodist Church in Ukraine after war broke out there just over a year ago. We also collected socks and underwear to give to Ukrainian refugees who had arrived in Jacksonville. That was Andy Sunday. Do you remember that? Through our General Missions Fund, we have dispersed more than $40,000 across our supported mission partners. And we are currently readying another disbursement to those partners that will go out in the coming weeks and months. We also introduced our monthly hands-on mission opportunities in which we invited anyone to come along and to take part in a difference-making project one Saturday a month. These included our citrus drive taking part in the MLK parade, packing literally thousands of dried food meals with Rise Against Hunger, we also tackled hunger right here in our own community by providing meals through IDN and Gracie's Kitchen and through our peanut butter drive for the Barnabas Food Pantry. We also continued in our school church partnership with Yuli Elementary, expressing love and care for the staff and faculty there during teacher appreciation time. And we supported educators across our whole community by inviting them to come here and gather from the free school supplies that we had collected for them in the month of August. Love showed up when we went to join with the work of the Ark, Nassau, and the amazing community that gathers there. Love also showed up when we took part in a work day at our, over at our friends in America's youth. Love showed up when our people took part in a local beach cleanup. And then love showed up again when our people partnered in a local Habitat for Humanity build. We set another new record in terms of the value of the gift cards that we sent from our church family to the Florida United Methodist Children's Home just a month or two ago as Christmas was approaching. And then also through the gifts that are made to the Pastors Fund here, Pastor Carrie and myself have been able to help and support numerous families who have found themselves in crisis at various times in the last 12 months. Now, isn't all of that amazing? Did you actually know that you are a part of all of that? And then what about the other most important part of all of this? That's you, the people. What can I say about membership here at Memorial? Well, there's absolutely no doubt that the last three years have taken their toll on local churches all over the world. And our church is no different. The pandemic certainly changed things for us, and we were not helped either by the ongoing difficulties within the United Methodist denomination, and of course the wider political divisions and tensions that exist in our society in these days. On top of all this, during the last year we have supported more families in their times of bereavement than at any other time in my ministry here at Memorial. In the last year, Pastor Carey and myself have led 21 memorial services, with 15 of those being for our own members. That is a lot of loss, my friends. But those realities don't paint the whole picture. As we move into 2023, 
Even with the losses of the last several years, I can tell you that we have started trending and moving in the right direction once again. In 2021, our average worship attendance for the year was 389. And in 2022, that number rose to 407. Participation in discipleship classes and small group activities also increased over those two years, going from 133 in 2021 to 146 in 22. In 21, 23 people participated in our new members class and 100% of them went on to become members of our church. And then in 2022, we had 43 participants with 38 of them becoming members. And today, we are starting another round of that class and there are at least 12 people signed up to take it. My friends, even with the difficulties of recent times, we are growing again at Memorial. Now, isn't that amazing? What about everybody's favorite topic at church? Money. (laughs) How are we doing in that department? In recent times, finances have been a real struggle for churches across the globe. But at Memorial, I am so happy and so grateful to be able to say that we are more than holding our own. As we move into, as we moved into 2021, we had received 195 pledges to support the general operating budget. Those totaled $864,268, of which we ultimately received $862,527. As we moved into 2022, those pledge numbers dropped significantly, receiving 163 pledges to total $707,934 of which we actually received over 735,000. And now I'm moving into 23. We have 188 pledges totaling $954,662. In 2021, we ran the reaching high, Growing Deeper Reaching Higher capital campaign to which people pledged gifts amounting $1.3 million, 151 of them. We're only halfway through that campaign, but we have already received 71% of those pledges as well as over $50,000 in unpledged givings. Those dollars were used to install a new church playground here on our campus, to renovate Maxwell Hall, where I'm preaching from today, and also to cancel down the more than $700,000 worth of debt. As things stand today, two of those goals have been met, and we are well on our way to the third. My friends, the numbers don't lie. We are growing again, and the people who are here at Memorial now want to be here. They are committed to moving forward in Christ together. On top of all of this, there are so many more miscellaneous bits and pieces that point to the health of this church congregation that you are a part of. We celebrated 200 years of faithful witness last year. 200 years! Have you any idea how hard it is to keep a church going for that long and to still be thriving? Our church also has three representatives sitting on the conference board of ordained ministry, two more that serve on the district committee on ordained ministry. Memorial Church member Jessica Scott is currently serving as the lay leader for the entire Northeast District of the Florida Conference. In recent weeks, we have established the Memorial Endowment Fund, that will become a gift of legacy from our generation to the generations that will follow us here in the next 200 years. Our youth ministry is thriving. Our children's ministry is thriving also. Young people and children are leading us in worship regularly, and they are participating in the leadership committees of our church at various points. Now, isn't all of that amazing too? Did you know that you were a part of all that? Church, you've done the work. You've put in the miles. You've got all that you need. And I know that we will cross that line. I thank God for the state of the church. Because during these last three years, when things were at high risk, and had the potential of failing and going under. During three years when we lost people to death and division and downright desertion, we never stopped. Memorial never closed. 
We transformed ourselves. We adapted to the times. We kept our eyes on Jesus Christ. We renewed our commitment to God's mission. And in the power of God's spirit, we got on with the work of worship and witness. The numbers don't lie, my friends. We are a healthy church, well positioned to move forward with hearts that are open to Christ's work among us and through us. And it's because of all of this that I can say, along with the Apostle Paul, that I am confident that the one who began a good work in us will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. And so I also join the Apostle Paul, the Pastor Paul, in praying for the church. His prayer for the Philippians in verses 9 through 11 of our reading is also my prayer for all of us here at Memorial, that our love might overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help us determine what is best, so that we might come before Christ pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory of God. In Christ, we have been made ready. And with hearts open to Christ's work within us, we are set. And next week, we're going to hear the command to go. So make sure you don't miss it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, at the end of each sermon on our digital service, we always post some questions that will help you reflect on what you have been listening to and where you need to go next with it. So here are this week's questions. That brings us to the end of our digital worship service here. As always, we are so, so thankful that you have joined us for these moments together. And we hope that you have sensed God's presence with you wherever you are. If you want to join us again for worship in this digital form, we will be back on our YouTube channel next Sunday at 11 a.m. Or if you want to join us in person, if you're here in Fernandina Beach, we would love to welcome you on campus. We have three services. Uh, first of all, at 8 a.m. in our sanctuary, 9.30 then here in Maxwell Hall, and then back in our sanctuary at 11 a.m. Wherever you worship, however you worship, the most important thing is that we continue the work of worship and ministry, striding forward in the mission that God has called us to. And church, we are more than fit and healthy and strong to do all that we are being called to. Would you receive this benediction? Go in peace, beloved children of God, to join in with the work of God in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.